Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 16 and compare it against the iPhone XS and see which particular phone is a better one for you. Now, both these iPhones, I think, are very interesting. The iPhone 16 clearly is a better one in almost every single way, but the iPhone XS may still have some capability here and there that might still be good. So, we'll take a look at both these phones. If you want to pick up either one of these devices, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there, and you can also support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both, the iPhone XS, which came out back in 2018, on the front side of this particular phone is giving you a 5.8-inch Super Retina OLED display. And it's a pretty good looking panel. You know, I'm still a fan of the way this particular screen looks. And honestly, it still is like a pretty good looking phone. It doesn't get the brightest, it's still 60 hertz, you still have the notch up top. But I do think for a phone that came out back in 2018, this phone is like six years old now, I think it's still a very good, capable phone. And I definitely do think this phone deserves a lot of credit from that particular side. On the iPhone 16, on the flip side, you're getting a bigger 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. So this screen is 60 hertz still, so definitely not the most perfect thing in the world, but it still is a really good looking device in I think a lot of ways. So for one, you have to remember that this particular phone is still giving you pretty good capability when it comes down to the whole entire display. It's a brighter display than the iPhone XS, which is a pretty big thing to keep in mind. And I do think it still is a really nice looking device for the most part. So it's brighter, has a dynamic island, but it's still 60 hertz. So keep that in mind. Now for the rest of the bodies, what's really interesting is that the iPhone XS actually kind of looks a little bit different. So it has the curved side versus the flat side, but I actually do miss this reflective material that we had on the iPhone XS. Apple removed it a couple generations ago, but still, I do miss this kind of reflective material and this gold color looks so good. You have the action button and the volume buttons here on the iPhone 16. One of the biggest differences though, is that we are going from a lightning on the iPhone XS to USB type C on the iPhone 16. USB type C is significantly better and this in and of itself could be a really big upgrade to a lot of people. I know for me personally, if I was upgrading to the 16, that would be one of my favorite differences. Then you have the camera button on this side of the iPhone 16 on this side. It's definitely not the biggest difference in the world, but it still is kind of nice to have this type of dedicated camera button right there. On the back side, dual camera setups on both, which again is kind of interesting to getting that type of you know camera capability I think is really nice to have. On top of that, both phones are giving you glass backs, although they're a little bit different. The iPhone XS is basically giving you the standard glass back on the back side, where the iPhone 16 is giving you this you know, frosted glass back, which definitely feels a lot more premium. So if I'm going to go through and like pick up a phone, definitely a phone like the iPhone 16 feels a lot more premium. You're also getting MagSafe capability on the back side as well, which is really cool. So overall on the outside, I definitely will tell you lots of good capability, lots of similarity as well in some ways. But the iPhone 16, I think, is a better feeling and looking phone when it kind of comes down to it. So kind of keep that in mind there. Now, when it comes down to the overall software longevity side, this is a big thing to keep in mind here. The iPhone XS, you know, is probably not going to be the longest lasting phone of all time. And there's a very high likelihood this phone is not really going to last that much longer. I'm pretty sure if I had to kind of guess, this phone is probably going to be lasting like another like year. And then I think that's it. So I generally don't think it's going to last that much longer, which is kind of a disadvantage for this type of device. It's again, not the biggest deal in the world, but that is just one thing you're going to notice as you're kind of going through and picking up this type of phone, that it's not going to be the best performing device from that particular perspective. But I will still say for the most part, if you're going to go through and pick up a phone, this thing's not terrible, but the iPhone 16 by far is going to be the one that's going to be the longer lasting device here in basically every single way you can imagine. So once again, from that side, that kind of covers it up here as well. Now let's go and do a speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 16 has an Apple A18 Bion or A18 chipset inside of it with 8 gigabytes of RAM, where the iPhone XS has an Apple A12 Bionic chip inside of it with 4 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go see which one's a faster phone between both. Okay, there we go. That kind of covers this one up. Let's go and get into phone calls. Three, two, one. Okay, nothing super crazy there. Music. Three, two, one. Okay, two different pop-ups there. Let's go and get into calendar. Three, two, one. Okay, two different pop-ups. Photos, three, two, one. Okay, a little bit of a difference there. The iPhone 16, definitely faster. Camera, three, two, one. Okay, I don't know what just happened with my iPhone 16. That was very, very weird. And actually, I think my iPhone 16 just randomly restarted, right? Like, why did this phone just completely turn off? That was very, very weird. I've never really had that happen before. So for some reason, my iPhone 16 did end up just restarting. 
again, I don't know why that happened. That was very weird. Maybe the camera glitch is still going on, but like that was a very weird thing that just happened here. So we'll give it a second, let it boot back up again, and I'll reload those applications in the background. So at least we'll start off at the same foot. Okay, there we go. We booted back up. So now I'm going to load these applications back up again. So we'll start off with the same footprint. So you can see right here. So again, I don't know why that iPhone 16 restarted. Let's go and get into mail, three, two, one. Okay, a little bit of a delay on the iPhone XS, as you probably noticed. Notes, three, two, one. And 10s actually looked a little bit faster there. Hopping out of here, clock three, two, one. So you can notice that little bit of a delay as you're kind of opening up an application on the iPhone XS. News, three, two, one. Okay. And the 16 was faster. 10 is a little bit slower, but it's not even that big of a difference. Apple TV 321, meaning it's not a big difference for how old this phone is. It is a big difference if this was like a brand new phone, but you're definitely seeing that the iPhone 16 is consistently faster overall than the iPhone 6, than the iPhone 10 S. So even with this, but I'm going to be honest, it's not like a big, massive difference, right? I think when we go, go into games and applications, you'll start noticing bigger differences there, but they're really not like these like massive, massive differences. Like you're really not noticing that. Hopping out of here, settings 321. Okay, 16 definitely faster there as well. Let's go and hop into Temple Run 2, 3, 2, 1. And even games and applications like this, like I, like I said before, the iPhone 16 almost every single time is going to be the overall faster one, without a doubt. But when you kind of notice these like little types of glitches here and there, or the iPhone 10 has like having a glitch here and there, that will add into the overall experience of that phone. Like when you're loading a massive game inside of your iPhone XS, that's when you're going to notice these really, really big differences. So I do think from that side, if you're comparing these two, the iPhone 16 is a way better, faster performing device, but the XS for its age is still actually performing very, very well, which I'm very, very surprised about. So from that side, that kind of covers it up there too. From the camera side, like I said before, we're getting a dual camera setup on the back of both of them, which is always nice to have. So a wide and ultra wide camera on the iPhone 16, but a wide and telephoto lens on the iPhone XS. So that is kind of a slight difference here when it kind of comes down to it. For me personally, when I'm looking at both these lenses, the iPhone XS camera, you know, you can do 4K at 60 on the back, 1080p at 60 on the front. It was a good camera when it first came out, right? I still think it's a pretty solid camera. You're getting 10x zoom there, you're getting a 1x zoom on the front side. I do think overall, if you're going to go through and like pick up a lens, this thing is not a terrible phone back in 2018. But for this day and age, it definitely is a little bit grainy. It's not as great. No 4K at 60 on the front. Not too many modes here either. Like you're pretty at a, it's like a lackluster type of experience for this day and age. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not as great as something like the iPhone 16. This phone is definitely better. So for one, you're getting that dedicated camera button, which is really nice to have. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out with this you know, type of button, which I like a lot. And that's something that's really nice. You're still maintaining things like video mode, cinematic mode, slow mode, time lapse, portrait mode, spatial mode, panorama mode. So this type of camera, I would say, is still very good. And if you're going to go and pick up a lens, this thing is very solid. And that's something I like a lot. So it's definitely not like a perfect camera by any means, but it definitely is a very, very good lens when it comes down to it. So overall, to kind of sum it up, what I'll definitely tell you is, is that these two phones, I think, are very interesting. I think the iPhone 16 clearly is a better one here. It's better than the iPhone XS in almost every single way, but you don't really have to go from an iPhone XS to the iPhone 16 if you don't want to. There's a lot of phones in between these two that I think are still very good options as well. Phones like, you know, the iPhone you know 14, I think is a good upgrade from the XS. The iPhone 15 is a really good upgrade as well. So if the 16 is too much out of your price range, you could also go for something like an iPhone 14 or 15 or even a 13 Pro in the used market, get a very big upgrade coming from your iPhone XS. So... In terms of that, that kind of covers it up there for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.